Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our reaction and review for Criminal Record Season 1, Episodes 1 and 2. This show premiered last night on Apple TV+. Plus. It's got Peter Capaldi and Kush Jumbo. It is fire. If you're not watching it, what are you doing with your life? You got to go over to Apple right now. Check it out. Like, There's a lot... A lot of awesome stuff in here. Yeah, it is dark. It is gritty. The writing is excellent. The performances are excellent. So far, we're only two episodes in. It's it's a short season, so, you know, it is what it is. We're only going to get so much time. But so far, they've packed a lot into two episodes. Like, I'm all in on this show. I am equally all in on this show. I I was really excited going into it, you know, because I'm I'm a longtime Doctor Who fan, and I watched Kostembo on The Good Wife and The Good Fight, and I was like, okay, this has the makings of something. Yeah. And it's still, it's layered, it's intense. I think the thing that I'm the most excited about here, you know, we, we love ourselves a good murder mystery around these parts, and we've got some of that. We've got questions about, you know, who's working with who, who's really fighting for the good side. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Let's talk quickly about Daniel's character. Is he dirty? Is he a dirty <laughs> cop or is he not dirty? Because the show is really trying to set this up in a way where he looks like he knows a lot more than he's letting on. But how much does he really know? You guys let us know in the comments. Do you think that he's involved in this in some sort of way and he is covering it up? Or is the show just making us think that maybe he's not what he seems and actually he's one of the better guys? Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started with criminal record coverage yeah. here. We've got a lot coming up. And by subscribing, you guys help us to be able to make these videos that we love to do for you. Also, True Detective, Monster Spade, they're coming up this Sunday. And we're going to be covering both of those murder mysteries here at the channel as well. So, yeah, hit that subscribe button. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Okay, let's let's get back to the question you raised here of if Daniel Hegarty is really dirty. Because this is where I'm landing on it for now. Mm -hmm. There's there's layers of dirtiness, everybody. There is maybe you put like your foot into some mud and you didn't wash it completely and you've got like a couple of caked pieces still on there. Or maybe you did like a swan dive and you've just like rolled around in the filth. I'm not willing to go full filth with Daniel just yet but mm -hmm. i think it's clear from watching these two episodes that either he knows something more about what really happened with errol who is the man who is sitting behind bars with the 24 year sentence for the murder of adelaide burroughs mm -hmm. or he has willingly turned a blind eye <laughs> to everything that is going on here and he is just sort of fine with that because that is preserving his future that is where i'm sort of landing on it right <laughs> now okay I'm getting my tinfoil hat out early here right. for a theory on Daniel. I don't think he's all the way dirty. I think that he's definitely like this and not looking mm -hmm. at everything. I think years ago when he was trying to close this case with Adelaide that he knew something was off. But my theory is, is that... The person that actually killed her was one of the 62, one of his buddies that they all came up with together and that that happened and that buddy kind of came to him and was like, hey, I think it's the boyfriend because it's, you know, it's always the spouse. It's always the wife. It's always the husband. It's always the girlfriend. It's always the boyfriend. And because... Errol was there and, you know, he came, we saw the flashback, he came in, he saw what had happened, he grabbed up Patrick, he ran out of the place, he jumped in the car, he didn't know what to do, he tried to get him out of there because it was awful what had happened, and then he got into that car accident. I think if it was another one of the 62, another cop that then came to Daniel was just like... Of course, it's the boyfriend. I mean, he was in the house. He he ran out. He ran out with the kid. He got into the accident. Of course, it's the boyfriend that Daniel was like, yes, it's the boyfriend. I think he just didn't know that it might have been one of his friends that did it. And they were presented. He was presented with just this information that was like, yeah, this all seems right. I think the biggest piece of evidence here when it comes to Daniel's either 
culpability or just willingness to not really look that hard into this case. We're going to stay in the past here for a moment because we met Doris in mm -hmm. this episode, who is Errol's mother. And yeah. in that conversation with Doris at the very end, she makes it very clear <laughs> to June that, okay, Hegarty is not a good guy here. Daniel did not do anything for her. And that screams to me that, okay, you had a confession from Errol, a confession. and you Yeah, know. after he got into a car accident and his head was all, like, not not in the game anymore. Like, yeah. we don't know what kind of shape he was in. Because even later, it was kind of like a, he was saying, you know, I, I don't remember everything. Or I, I'm yeah. not sure. And it's like, well, he just got into a car accident. I had seen a segment, I think it was on last week tonight with John Oliver, that talked a lot about like coerced confessions and mm -hmm. how these can also come about. And like back when we were first just like hearing about the show before even watching it and getting the story, like that was where I was kind of leaning. Where it's like, okay, whether it's Daniel or somebody else probably influenced him making this confession. But yeah, you're adding to it the fact that everything that he went through leading into it, if he was confused, if he was anything else, like there's clearly a reason why Daniel moved so quickly after this confession was given. And that, that to me is the biggest mystery of the past right now, because we see in the present how thorough Daniel can be and how willing to cover his tracks he can be. Like he is not a bad cop when he wants to be a very good seasoned cop. So why was he not that in this instance in the past? Like there are, a lot of reasons for it some of which are superficial and then i think there are also some other ones that really dive pretty deep and we we got to get more answers to this we're only two episodes in yeah that's the thing too is that we know that there were two callers that called in you know we've got the Hay hayes lane caller the yeah. first woman who called in who said that her boyfriend is actually the person that killed Adelaide. And then we have the second caller who called in, who is Maria, who was thrown off the balcony by Clive. Clive is now in custody. He knew Errol, but did he also kill Adelaide? This, okay, I have already, the amount of mental gymnastics that are going to happen on this show with the, like theorizing, do some stretches, just like prepare yourself, because I already went through a lot with this because i feel like who I, killed adelaide oh god now i'm on the <laughs> spot okay guys here we go i i think there's a good chance it was clive but i'm not 100 percent on it mm -hmm. like this is the this is the thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what sort of show is criminal record trying to be like yeah. is this a show where we're really meant to spend like spend like the remainder of these episodes thinking okay who did this and why did they do it or is it okay we know who did it but why was this there elaborate cover-up. I mean, what we do know about Clive right now is that he did have a history with Errol. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff that's going on there. Clearly, mm -hmm. he's got a pretty long rap sheet that was established within this episode. Mm -hmm. So he has been involved in doing many horrible things for a particularly long period of time. He was around the neighborhood way back when, back when Adelaide was first killed. So it's like there is still a lot of smoke and there's still a pretty big problem here whereas let's say let's just say that clive is the killer mm -hmm. how are you going to prove it at this point because we saw in these episodes you know june try to go in there and try to ask him all these questions and the moment she starts the circle what happened way back when everybody else is just like no 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 and they just like yank her out of there which by the way another <laughs> central theme of the first two episodes of criminal records just the amount of annoying red tape that apparently exists when it comes to law enforcement. I do not understand law enforcement in Great Britain whatsoever. I'm going to throw that out there. But man, is it difficult for her to do her job. Also, Daniel. Listen, Daniel. <laughs> so he knew from very early on, he rushed through to find out that it was actually two different callers right from the start. He knew it. He sat on it. He yeah. let June spiral out thinking that it was one caller. They were both connected and they were both connected to Clive. He knew it. And he let her do that because he wanted to try to 
I feel, embarrass her, to make mm -hmm. it that she made a huge spectacle about it, to get to the end of this, to then be like, you were wrong. I was right. I knew this. Here's the proof. Stop what you're doing. Okay. Like just, it's over. Stop. Move on sort of thing. And I think what he didn't realize is by embarrassing her like that, that it just lit a fire under her to kind of be like, why would you do that? Like, what are what is the purpose of doing this? Like, why are you trying to move me away from the Hayes Lane, you know, phone call? Like, and what is going on with all of that? I don't understand. So we know that Maria is gone, but we know that this other woman is not, and that there is still somebody out there. My my guess with Daniel here is that he must have tried some of these tactics with some other people in the fa in the past, and whether it's like a fear of retaliation or that he'll get them in further trouble, because it seems like Daniel has already just sort of brought in people to sniff around every single thing that June is doing that, okay, this will be enough for her to sort of lay off of this. But as you laid out, it's not like this is somebody who was pretty tenacious who really wants these answers and wants to find a way to do it without any sort of questioning i mean we see that there are people all around errol at this point who feel pretty strongly okay he didn't he didn't do it but they've also and i think they did a really effective job with this making it seem like okay we have you know exhausted all these resources before we're not exactly trusting like you know sonia's not exactly willing to like have a long conversation here with june early on because she just thinks okay it's more trouble doris just thinks okay you're gonna try to pin something else on errol because that's the opinion they have of the police at this point i love sonia singh <laughs> Uh, and she's so just like, yeah. you know, clear about everything. She calls it as she sees it. Like, there's just something about her that I really like. I am I was really happy by the end of the episode to see that June went to Sonia and was kind of like, nah, I'm not, I'm not sitting down for this. This is what's going on. Let's work together sort of thing. I really like that because I want to see more of Sonia. <laughs> Did you... Okay, d did you actually think that there were two callers before we got to the end of the episode and we found out that truthfully there was? Because I, I thought they were the same person. I thought that this was all like some sort of mind game that, yeah. you know, it was just Daniel just trying to trick or confuse her. I, I didn't notice any difference at all in like vocal takes or anything when I was listening to the calls. I just believe June because it feels like we're really looking at this from June's perspective more than anybody else's. Mm -hmm. And I trust her character and I trust her judgment on things. And yeah, I know they, they said that she's only been a detective for a year and a half, but that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that she's wrong. And yeah. you know, so for me, I just trusted where she was going with it. And even though she was wrong about that, I don't think she's wrong. I like, I, I think the killer's still out there. I don't think that it's Clive. I think that there's, I think you're right. There are two things that are going on here with the show. It's, you know, who killed them, but also, you know, what was Daniel's involvement in this? Like, are we looking at a cover up? And that last scene where we saw the Hayes Lane caller in the car getting into like a Jetta or whatever it was. And mm -hmm. we saw the, the driver get in tinfoil hat. All right. Is it, is it Daniel? We saw at the beginning of these episodes on his spare time, he does driving. He'll, you know, he's got like a black car service that he's working with, you know, driving people around, doing security, all that type of stuff yeah. on his off time. So when we, I, I watched this an unhealthy amount of times to watch a person yeah. that was getting into the car with her. And I only saw the back of their head, but, you know, gray hair, white, wedding ring. But the thing that was missing that I had seen already that Daniel has is he has a wedding ring, but he also has a watch, a really expensive watch mm -hmm. that he wears all the time. When they showed the hand on the wheel, they showed the ring but I didn't see the watch and I don't know if it was just like, oh, he took the watch off or it was covered with a sleeve or it's not the same guy. And it's one of this, you know, the 62. It's it's another one of these cops that are part of that group. Yeah, that's that's where I'm kind of leaning right now between the two, just because I feel I, I feel like it would be a lot if. <laughs> 
Daniel has already tracked down this Hayes Lane collar. He knows where she is. Because then, then we're really starting to get into, okay, well, then Daniel is fully dirty. And there's something really bad going on here if he is already aware of where this woman is. Because then I'm starting to wonder, okay, if you know where she is and you haven't informed anybody of the police... Where are you taking her? Like, what are you what are you trying to do at this point? It gets into really dodgy material. I was trying to study yeah. her face, like the Hayes Lane collar in the car. Like, she, I mean, she obviously has a reason to be very concerned and very upset based on everything that's been going on with her. But just the look on her face, like, it, it felt like she was very concerned as to where she was going or what was going on. Absolutely. And, you know, if... If the killer's actually Clive, then, and she probably would have heard by now that her boyfriend is in custody and that she would be more safe now. She didn't look like somebody who felt like they were safe. It looked like somebody who was very worried. And because we had that, you know, back and forth where we had June and Sonia basically being like, well, if there's two callers, that means that the person who called in about Adelaide is still out there with information about her. So if we can get to her, we can get more information about who the real killer is. And then we see her, of course, you know, tears down her face in this car with, you know, questionable man <laughs> driving yeah. it, you know, Daniel or one of his friends or who knows, the killer. You know, are we going to go into episode three and now she's just dead? You make you made a really good point about the uh, fact that she would be more relieved if Clive was behind bars because I, I I have sort of sat here thinking that it, there was tears of relief. I it just didn't look like relief. It looked like she was still in pain, and so I I was going into this video being like, okay, Clive maybe killed the Hayes. I mean, didn't kill the Hayes Lane caller, but was basically the boyfriend of that, and also this other situation with Maria. Just because mm -hmm. if he's a bad enough dude to you know kill somebody, he's going to be a bad enough dude to you know, be around multiple women. But I think you you have convinced me that, okay, that's probably not the case in this situation. It could be. It could be, but yeah, I think she would be a little bit more relieved. And I think that the idea that there is somebody else still out there, I think adds yet another layer to all this. Now, do I think that Clive still knows something more that June hasn't been able to get out of him? Yes, because we're talking about, you know, people who have lived in a specific neighborhood for a long period of time that have mm -hmm. a history of law enforcement. And my like my theory as to where things are going with June and Clive is that, you know, June, as you've already outlined, she's not thrilled here with the idea that Daniel has gotten one over on her in a pretty embarrassing way. Yeah, she's going to find a way to get one over on him that allows her access to Clive where whether she's able to make some sort of better accommodation for him in prison, which, you know, it's not, nobody's rooting for Clive to have that, obviously, but this is something no. that, it ha it happens a lot when you mm -hmm. want information out of somebody, and she has to find a way to do something to get that information that he doesn't <laughs> know about, and then she has, like, this little carrot that she can then use <laughs> to get more information, because at this point, Daniel is 100 steps ahead, because he was there, he remembers every single thing that happened, like in that meeting that he, of course, willingly organized and put together because he knew he was just going to go in there and completely take her down at every turn. Yes. Like, over an email. Yeah. Like, stop. Yeah. He. She didn't send the email. She showed up at your office. Yeah. Stop. You have to take it to a 10? Yeah. Like, if you're clearly this prepared, Daniel, in this moment, like, you clearly we're way more well aware of some things going on with Daryl than you're letting on. And that, to me, is why you're scrambling to the extent that you are. It might not be something that gets you arrested at the end of the day, but it could be something that changes your reputation, how people think about you. Like, we don't know a lot about, you know, who Daniel Hegarty is away from, like, the jobs that he does. But he seems to be a very prideful man. He seems to be somebody who likes being top dog, who likes everybody at the department respecting him. And like the moment in these episodes that June goes into the office and brings everything up to him, he knows immediately what's going to happen. He, they're, they're, I, this is one of the things the show does best is that they have made these two characters like incredibly intelligent, that they're both reactive and neither one of them slows down at all. 
Yeah, I mean, I think part of it is that Daniel had blinders on to, you know, this whole case and he pushed it through and, you know, got the confession and moved on from it. And now he's circling kind of the end of his career. You know, it's he's on in years. He's done this for a really long time. He is taking on some other jobs, you know, that he doesn't want the end of his career to come with this blemish on it where it's like, Oh, one of your biggest cases, you were wrong about it. Let's unravel this in front of everybody and embarrass you, which I think is why he then was like, Oh, you're going to embarrass me. No, I'm going to embarrass you. And then I'm going to give you Clive so that you'll stop to be like, listen, you got the guy, you got the guy who killed Maria. Stop. Okay. This Here's my one real beef with these two episodes. <laughs> do we need June's husband? Do do we do we need that character? That 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 part of the show didn't work for me because it just felt like okay, here is the guy who's here to provide exposition, who is here to ask questions that are just like, "Oh, do you really want to do this?" And they like make this real point about, "Oh, you know, oh, this is what you get for being with the therapist." It's like, "Okay, all right." It's just like everything else is so strong and it's just like with that I was just like, okay, you clearly want somebody to show how much the job is taking a toll on her. I just feel like we have seen that story a million times. We have, but I think they needed to have something to show us what her home life is like so that we're not just seeing her at the job. We kind of have an idea, you know, she's got a family and and go with that. But what I don't want to see happen, please, Mm -hmm. is that her kid's going to get kidnapped, her husband's going (laughs) to get abducted. Like, I just don't want to see that because that... Oh my goodness, if you guys have been watching crime TV and mysteries yeah. forever, then that's always what happens. It's always the family of the cop gets picked up and then there's like a big rush to save them. <laughs> I do not want to see that with this show. This show is better than that. Just lean on the strengths that you guys have. You have two incredible actors at the center of this show who are playing these really interesting, <laughs> morally complex characters. It's like we've watched these first two episodes and... There's a lot of mysteries, but I think what's so fun about this show right now is that there's not only a bunch of mysteries, but there's also a question of what the mystery is. Like is the is, is like we said earlier, is this show about, you know, who the actual murderer is or is it, you know, what's behind the cover up? Like there's a lot that we have to think about. The other mystery is is why does it take so long for people to get to a crime scene? Like that (laughs) happened twice in these episodes where she was at a crime scene calling in and it's like, oh, we're like uh, eight minutes away. We're like six minutes away. It's like, it's happening right now. Like, (laughs) can't you get somebody? Nah, sorry. It's just like, oh my goodness. Like this person's going to be dead and they are. So, you know, well done. Your six minute (laughs) response time. And here's just me on the outside of this being completely ignorant when it comes to everything in in the UK. I'm just thinking like, everything is so close in the UK. This is probably just <laughs> downstairs. You could just like, and I, I, I know every British viewer of this channel is getting ready to just like set me on fire in the comments. I'm sorry. I haven't been to Britain. I don't know what it's like, but th- these episodes are so, are so good. Like I... I had high hopes for this show based on the talent that was in it, but it's actually living up to it. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, the talent on the show is next level. All right. Well, you know, hit that subscribe button, guys, because we have so much more coming on Criminal Record. We don't want you to miss any of that. Also, thank you to our patrons for your support. That's very much appreciated. Remember, we have lives every single week talking all about Criminal Record over there. We don't want you guys to miss that. And we'll see you here next time.